Just over a year ago, I made a Meowth video and really went to town on this little kitty. As a kid, I just found it so weird that he could speak in the anime, and that made it one of my least favorite Pokemon of all in Generation 1. As years went by and two regional variants were introduced, my dislike only increased. However, so many of you came to Meowth's rescue in the comments of my last video, and honestly, it did pretty well for a first stage Pokemon. So today, I've decided to do a redo video, just so that I can be a little bit kinder to this cute kitty. Also, I want to collect some metrics so that I can re-rank Meowth fairly in my Pokemon Yellow Solo Challenge tier list. Finally, I just finished coughing in Ekans playthroughs, so this video just feels like it should be next. Also, my fiancé is trying to convince me that we should get a cat, so maybe Meowth will help convince me? I'm gonna be a hard sell. Anyways, let's get into it. Here are the rules for the playthrough. I've also left a detailed copy of them in the description so that you can reference them later. I nicknamed my Meowth Luna because that's the name of this gorgeous neighborhood cat that constantly visits me. Then it's time to battle the rival for the first time. Scratch gets the same type attack bonus and does one quarter to Eevee, but Meowth's defenses aren't impressive, and Eevee does more in return. With my third attack, Meowth scores a crit, but it doesn't knock Eevee out, giving it a chance to attack when my defense is lowered. However, it just uses Tail Whip again, and that's a victory for me. I think this fight was the perfect demonstration of Meowth's base stats. It has 40 HP, 45 attack, 35 defense, 40 special, and 90 speed, giving it a nearly 18% chance to crit. Obviously in that fight we saw that Meowth wasn't particularly defensive, it really can't take hits well, but let's go a little bit deeper into this. So Meowth is tied for 13th place when compared with other first stage Pokemon, and it ties for place 51 when compared to all the Pokemon in the game. This is considering base stat totals. However, its incredible speed paired with the fact that all normal type attacks are physical before generation 4, it's going to be hitting really hard with most of its attack. Now moving on to its move pool, it's not particularly impressive. It gets all the typical moves like Toxic Body Slam, Take Down, Double Edge, Mimic, Swift, Rest, and Substitute. The addition of Water Gun, Bubble Beam, Thunderbolt, and Thunder are good coverage options. However, the real standout move of its entire set is Slash, and I'm going to talk about why later on. For now, I'm going to need to solve the Brock problem, and as a normal type with only access to normal moves, the prospects don't look good. I know that Meowth won't be able to defeat him before level 12 when it learns Bite, so I'll train for that. With Stab, this move is actually a 90 effective power move. Yes, Bite is a normal type move in Generation 1, so maybe it's going to be enough to take the rocks down? I train in the forest against the bug catchers for 1.5 times experience, as well as knocking out all the wild Pokemon I come across. I catch myself a Pidgey and backtrack to Viridian City to heal. I'm going to face the optional rival today for extra experience. Plus, at level 9, Meowth has 24 speed, so I'm moving first against the Spearow with no problems. Unfortunately, it does get a Growl in before it goes down, making the Eevee a bit more stressful to face. Scratch isn't doing much, Eevee uses Tail Whip, and then Sand Attack. Ugh. But Meowth's on its game, and it's not missing a single hit. After all, all that setup the rival tried to do just gave me time to take the win. The journey back through the forest gives Meowth enough experience to level up and learn Bite. With this new move, I now have a lot of PP, so I could just stay here and train a few more levels. However, since this is my first playthrough, I'm going to head to Pewter City, defeat the Junior Trainer, and then scout Brock to see how Meowth stacks up. Geodude is first. Oh no, <laughs> it got a crit and did so much with Tackle. While Bite is doing decent damage, Meowth is just taking too much with each hit because of its low defense. I don't even manage to make it to the Onyx as a result. More levels are needed. I come back at level 15. After all, this was the level that I made it past Brock in my last video. Meowth scores a crit first turn, dealing one third to Geodude, and then gets another one on the third turn, taking it down in only four turns. I've got green health for Onyx now. Because I outspeed the rock hard snake, when it uses Bide, I can lower its attack with Growl for free and prevent all damage. However, it uses Screech twice, lowering Meowth's already weak defenses. Bite causes a flinch, Onyx uses Tackle, and that did a lot. It tackles again, taking Meowth to 4 hit points. Now I'm gonna need some luck. Meowth bites, it causes a flinch, plus Onyx uses Bide, handing me a lucky victory. Honestly, I think this is a surprising result for Meowth. I don't expect normal types to make it past Brock this quickly. 
but access to a powerful stab move like Bite accelerated its training, caused flinches against Brock, and comboed with its crit rate to give me the win. Next, progress accelerates for Meowth because Bite absolutely shreds all the trainers on Route 3. Just inside Mount Moon, I grab the TM for Water Gun and teach it immediately. Against the Super Nerd, I have a bit of fun and use Payday a bit. I got this comment about Payday, and I love it so much. As a kid, I also thought this move was really powerful and cool, because extra money is honestly just great. After obtaining the Dome Fossil, my Meowth proves to Team Rocket that it's the best Meowth. I assume that it's going to be the best Team Rocket Pokemon in my tier list as well. <laughs> After all, Coffee and Ekans were really painful, so I'm hoping that that's going to be the case. But this is just my prediction at this point. There might be some unforeseen challenges coming up, and one of them might be the rival on Nugget Bridge. Here's some live audio from that fight. Okay, time for the optional rival. Let's see what goes. Spiro first, bite, half damage, flinch. Sweet, perfect. Okay, water gun's just for Sandshrew. Half, scratch, pretty good. All right, Rotata, bite, obviously. I almost one hit and it missed Tail Whip. I can't believe that. Sweet. And a critical hit against the Eevee. This fight was great. Well done, Meowth. So that wasn't a challenge, and neither is Nugget Bridge. I can serve my PP by using Payday. Uh, by the way, that's how it works in real life, too. Water Gun helps out against one mandatory hiker, so Meowth made it through the route without having to head back to heal even once. On my way back to Cerulean, I realized that I only have 54 speed, and that means I won't move first against Misty's Starmie. I decide to fight the Rocket Man to hopefully level up so that my speed will go up, and it does after I defeat him. Well, I probably should have just fought the Junior Trainer in front of Misty to level up, but oh well. In my previous video, I made it past her at this level, so let's try it again and see if it works. In the past, I didn't do any consistency testing, so I have no idea if this is going to work out. Last time, Starmie just sat around trying to raise its defense, and I took an easy victory. But this time, Meowth isn't getting lucky. It must be all the payday usage on Nugget Bridge. I'll head south to the SSN for Body Slam first. On the way to Vermilion, I have to face the Pidgey Junior Trainer. Meowth isn't one-hitting her birds, giving them the opportunity to use Sand Attack. However, Meowth's refusing to miss, so I take the victory. On the SSN, I decide to play safe and grab Rest, my signature move. Then I pick up Body Slam, Meowth's new favorite move. And I finally don't use the Heal Bed, because honestly, even if it existed, the rival here isn't a big enough threat to warrant using it. I dig back to Cerulean, and then I go head to head with Misty for the third time. Star use first. Body Slam takes it down into single hit. Starmie takes half damage, Misty uses an X Defend, Meowth takes it to red, Bubble Beam does over a third, and that's that. An easy victory with Body Slam, and I didn't even need to get a Paralysis. Now, here's some live audio for my Surge fight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do this way too much. Anyways, check it out. Oh, I should have healed. I always forget to heal on this fight. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh. After the hit to my morale that was that victory against Surge, I teach Meowth Thunderbolt and Bubble Beam. Both of these are extremely helpful for Rock Tunnel. Bubble Beam manages the Cubone, Thunderbolt for the two following Slowpoke. The Status Junior Trainer fails to status Meowth, and Bubble Beam sweeps the self-destructing Hiker. It's time for the mid-game. These days, I prefer to play allowing myself to skip the Rocket Hideout by using the Pokedoll in Pokemon Tower. This wasn't the case last time I played with Meowth. Honestly, just doing this small portion of the game adds bulk to my recording sessions, and it's really boring. If there was a glitch that allowed me to skip the rocket plotline in, say, Generation 2, I'd also use it. Th that That's way more boring than this, actually. However, I regularly stop by here just to grab some useful items. The PP up, this nugget, HP up, and rare candy. Because I want to give Meowth the best possible stats for this playthrough, I sell as many items as possible, pick up some TMs from the girl on the vending machine floor, and then sell all of those to get just enough. And I mean just enough money to buy four proteins. Apparently, all those paydays that I used back in Mount Moon and Nugget Bridge were the key to obtaining this one extra protein. I need to keep that in mind for my second playthrough. The rival in Pokemon Tower is next. This fight is a litmus test determining if my Pokemon might be destined for the Bruno tier. If I lose, it probably is, but if not, everything is proceeding normally. Meowth takes the win easily and is proceeding to the Chandler. Unfortunately, they do pose a threat. 
Because Thunderbolt needs three turns to knock this Ghastly out, there's time for them to use either Confuse Ray or Nightshade. Yes, in Generation 1, Nightshade does hit normal type Pokemon. All fixed damage moves ignore type effectiveness when dealing their damage, and that allows them to hit Pokemon that should be immune to them. The second Ghastly comes out and brings Meowth all the way down to red health before it finally faints. Luckily for me, the second two Chandler at the top of the tower are even easier because they only have a single team member each. Uh, they're even easy when I'm not paying attention. <laughs> uh... So, while I was playing this portion of the game, I was wondering why Meowth doesn't learn Dig. It's clear that when Game Freak was assigning move pools to Pokemon, they were thinking about thematic flavor instead of gameplay balance. So, here are some examples. Why can't the fossils learn Rock Slide? Well, because they aren't rocks. They just have that typing because they were fossilized. Why can Hitmonchan learn Ice Punch, a special move? Well, because it's a punching Pokemon. Why can Cubone learn Fire Blast? This is a suggestion that I got from my viewers, and I think it's really great. It's because it's a ground type, and there's molten rock in the ground. Okay, why can't Lickitung learn Lick? Uh, okay. Uh, why can Rattata learn Blizzard? Hmm, maybe this theory doesn't hold up so well after all. Anyways, getting back on track, what I'm really trying to say is that cats dig. So, uh, it should learn dig. Yes, this is a poop joke, but really, I just want Dig for Meowth, so that Agatha won't be a complete nightmare. In the Safari Zone, I continue grabbing vitamins, and while I do that, let's talk about the Gym Leader team upgrades in Yellow version. Koga, Sabrina, and Blaine were given major improvements. For example, Koga and Sabrina's Ace got an increase of 7 levels. I'm not over leveled today, and with the level jump coming up, I decide that training in Erica's Gym is probably the best way to prepare Meowth. With a few more levels, I attempt Erica, and here's the live audio. Okay, Erica time. Here we go. Tangle up first, body slam. Ooh, critical hit from Mega Drain. Are you kidding me? Yikes. I think I'm actually gonna still manage it because it's. Oh, maybe not. Oh. Well, that was way more tense than I thought it would be. Weaving Bell's gonna paralyze me. That's that. I'm gonna do this later. This is not good now. So, that didn't go well. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll come back here and face her later after all my mid-game training is complete. And then, for some reason, I decide to start it all here, despite my thoughts in the moment being this. Okay, this guy. I gotta be careful against this guy. Uh, low kick me into oblivion, please. Oh gosh, Leer. Oh, at least no low kick. It's a good thing rockets don't have good AI. During my training in Sylph, I buy some more vitamins in Celadon City. I'm starting now to invest in calcium because my attack stat is probably maxed out. The way that stat experience works is that you can only use vitamins until a certain threshold has been achieved. After that, you have to battle trainers to gain more. With all of this training, I'm targeting level 44 so that Meowth will learn Slash. And even after every rocket in Sylph is defeated, Meowth still hasn't learned it. I fight the mandatory trainers in Koga's gym for some extra experience, and then I have to fight some optional ones as well. Meowth finally learns this awesome critical hit move. Since I'm here, I'll attempt Koga and see what happens. Meowth does have the speed required to move first against Venomoth anyways. Now, I'll explain crits. The formula for crit rate with high critical hit moves, like Slash, is the Pokemon's base speed divided by 64. That gives Meowth a roughly 140% chance to crit. So uh, yeah, it should be critting every single time it uses Slash. However, the game stores information in bytes, which have a value ranging from 0 to 255. When the game is determining if a crit occurs, it compares the Pokemon's crit threshold, which is ranging from 0 to 255, to a byte with a random value. The if statement that the formula checks is, if the random number is less than the threshold, the Pokemon gets a crit. This leaves the possibility for the random byte to be 255 and the threshold to be 255. If that occurs, Slash won't get a crit. And that's what happens first turn against Koga. <laughs> Just great! Venonat uses Sleep Powder, misses, and Meowth knocks it out. Second Venonat. Let's see how much Slash does with a crit. Okay, not enough for the KO, so Venonat poisons Meowth before going down. Koga won't use Sleep Powder now because I have a status condition, so Venonat uses Psychic for one quarter, and Meowth slashes it into Oblivion. Last is Venomoth. This mono fighting type is going to be tough to defeat. Slash crits does half, and Koga uses an X Defend. I win. This one is uh, likely going to require a few more levels on my reattempt, but I'll take this victory for now. If you want to know why Venomoth is a fighting type, uh, please check out my Venomoth video for answers. 
So here's some live audio from right after I attempted to grab the warden's rare candy. Ah, uh, I forgot Erica. <laughs> oh well, so I'm going back to do her. Um, yeah, okay. Well, this is a lot easier with Slash. It's, and being overleveled, I guess. Yeah, these two are just gonna go down. Easy. Okay, rival fival. No, I, I don't want to do this one. This one, I'm scared of. Okay, well, I can crit the Sand Slash, so that would be great. Amazing. Okay, Nine Tails doesn't quite go down at level 45, even with my crit. Thunderbolt doesn't enough. Uh, lowers my attack, but I'm going to crit anyways with Slash, so that doesn't even matter. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, double kicking Jolteon. Very scary, but I got it. That's that. After that, I face Jesse and James for the final time. Weezing uses Tackle, which is really funny for some reason. Like, why does this thing have Tackle? They could have given it a slightly better move set. Giovanni is simple too. Slash Nidorino and Persian for two quick KOs. Rhydon goes down to a single Bubble Beam. And even though Nidoqueen survives Slash, Double Kick doesn't do enough damage. Next, Meowth could take on Sabrina, but it only has 133 speed right now, and her Alakazam has 133 as well, so we're speed tied and that just seems like a little bit risky. I can solve this problem by surfing to Cinnabar Island and grabbing the last Carbos on the map. By using this, I'm then going to be able to outspeed the Alakazam. I make a quick stop to the department store for some last vitamins, and this takes Meowth all the way up to 137 speed. Now, it's time to take on the Psychic Master. Slash 1 hits Abra, and it also knocks out the Kadabra, but will it be enough for Alkazam? Unfortunately no, but the powerful Psychic type uses Recover, <laughs> and uh, that doesn't heal enough, and my second Slash knocks it out. Okay, it's time for Blaine. I might need to use uh, Rare Candies or Train more at this point, so let's see. Slash? Okay, half. That's pretty good. Okay, I would speed if it doesn't use Quick Attack. So I'm only going to take one turn of damage. Oh, I take a lot from takedown because Meowth's defense, not very good. Arcanine, maybe it'll use Reflect? Ooh, takedown, and it didn't even do half with my crit. Okay. Instead of continuing and just waiting for Arcanine to play nice with Reflect, I decide to defeat all the trainers in Blaine's gym. One or two more levels might give me the roll that I need to two-shot his ace with Slash. Okay, let's attempt Blaine again. I've kept Body Slam until now because I thought that I might eventually need the boosted consistency that a chance of paralysis provides. For that reason, I'm going to be using it first turn against his Pokemon. In this case, it causes a status, Blaine's Fox can't move, and Slash knocks it out. Rapidash is next. Same strategy here. No paralysis this time, and Stomp does a decent amount of damage. His ace is last. Please just use Reflect. Crits bypass all stat changes, so it's essentially a wasted turn if it does. But Arcanine uses Takedown instead. Meowth survives, and Arcanine takes recoil. Wait, wait, am I gonna knock it out now? Uh, nope, I'm not, so that's a second loss. But it did feel much closer. I'll try again. This time, Rapidash uses Fire Spin instead of a physical move, and that's actually way better for Meowth. I make it to Arcanine, use Body Slam because it's a three hit range anyways. Unfortunately, no paralysis. The Fire Doggo goes for Flamethrower, Meowth survives, slashes, and now I need luck. Please, Blaine. Use Reflect. He does, and that's that. So that was another lucky win, but Giovanni is last, and I'm really not very hopeful against him. Bubble Beam only does half to Doug Trio. I really should have used Slash here. My accuracy is lowered, and then I knock the mole out. Uh, mole? Is it, is it singular or is it moles? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Persian does so much with Slash, and then Nidoqueen uses Double Kick. He has good AI, so it's going to be either Double Kick or uh, the Signature Guard spec. Uh, well, I didn't get what I needed this time. I thought about mimicking Earthquake, but then I realized that Meowth is nearly dealing the same amount of damage with a crit from Slash, so super effective damage isn't even going to help me. Wasting a turn for Mimic is just a bad idea against Doug Trio as a result, but there is a better move for me to Mimic anyways. I can take Persian's double team and use it as a setup move. My rules specifically disallow the use of the TM for double team, because it applies to like every single fight and nearly every single Pokemon. I don't want this series to just be rolling the dice with double team with every Pokemon, that's really boring. But stealing it in this one fight to allow Pokemon to proceed at lower levels seems like it actually increases the interest for the Elite Four. After all, Pokemon like Pikachu and Magnemite had to get through this fight at like level 70, and you'd think that that made the rest of the game easy. 
Ah, electric types in Pokemon Yellow. <laughs> so bad. But yeah, I don't have rest to heal on any of his Pokemon. So if any of them connect, Meowth is going to go down. Unfortunately, Nidoking's double kick hits and that's that. I decided to train again. A higher level means better damage ranges and I'll survive Giovanni's hits more easily. Plus, my last attempt with Meowth, I leveled up to level 60 for this fight. Today, I don't go quite so far, stopping at level 57. Double team is going to enable the win here. I trust in the evasion RNG. This time, I set up while Persian does a lot of nothing. Unfortunately, my slash doesn't KO, and Persian gets a slash of its own in. Will my higher level help against the Nidos? Yes, it does. Now, Nido Queen goes down to two hits from slash. That gives Giovanni one less turn to hit me, so this time I make it to ride on. I've saved Bubble Beam just for the four times effective damage here. I use it, and it does enough. The final rival shouldn't be too bad if I make it past the Sand Slash without sustaining damage from Slash. I do, Execute surprisingly survives, but it tries Solar Beam and faints for free. Cloister with Sand's Thunderbolt, uses Clamp, and then goes down. Slash manages Kadabra, and last is Jolteon. Okay, I'm worried. Please Slash be enough. But it isn't. Jolteon uses Thunder Wave, moves first, and KOs Meowth with Thunder. Maybe if I get to the Jolteon with higher health, I'll survive. I make it back in my next fight with green health. After surviving a slash, Jolteon uses thunder, and it does so much. But Meowth hangs on with one hit point, and that's enough for me to take the victory. There are only five trainers left in the game now. Lorelei, Agatha, Lance, the champion, and of course Oak, I've added him in recent playthroughs. How is Meowth going to do against all of them? Let's find out. Lorelei leads with the snoozy seal dugong, and this one could pose a problem today, because it loves to use rest. That means I need Thunderbolt to have a 3 hit range. Luckily, it does. Cloister takes more damage from my electric attack, it uses Ice Beam, it doesn't freeze, and Meowth knocks it out. Slow bro time. I'm going to use my typical strategy here, mimic Amnesia, and then set up for Lapras. Meowth's typing is making it more consistent here than with other Pokemon like Coughing or Ekans. I can survive Psychics more easily here because they only do neutral damage. Slash 1 hits the Jinx, I cross my fingers, use Thunderbolt, and Lapras faints. So that's the first League member down. Next is uh, this lost hiker. He should be in Mount Moon or something, but instead he's here. Bubble Beam washes away his Onyx. Hitmonchan could freeze if it survives. However, Bruno uses an X Defend and it goes down. Just great. <laughs> Hitmonlee is slower than my Meowth and it faints in a single hit. This means the only fighting type move that's left is Machamp's Submission. I use Slash, it does half. Machamp uses Karate Chop, and it does so much. Oh, thankfully that wasn't a submission. Meowth hangs on, and Machamp gets taken out. Now, Agatha is next, and quite possibly this is the trainer that Meowth is least well prepared for. I wasn't expecting much on the first fight. Now, let's listen to the live audio. Okay, now it's time for Agatha. This is the one that I'm most scared of. I'm going to use substitute strats here. So, uh, steal substitute, set up with it. <laughs> While she switches, what is she doing? Okay, uh, that doesn't do very much. My crit rate might come through here, because, like, one in, um, one in five hits should be critting. Okay, there's a crit. Not on the Pokemon I wanted it. I've kept Bubble Beam this entire time just in case I need it. Uh, like, maybe I should bubble beam this thing down. Mm, paralysis is nice. I'm gonna bubble beam from here. Because of the paralysis. Rather just save my, uh, PP on... And then PP on Thunderbolt. Use Slash here. Okay, this is, uh... <laughs> this is going way better than I thought it would. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's gonna break my substitute. I'll reset it up so I don't get, uh, confused. Uh... It's not going well. Okay, I gotta go for it. Oh, come on. Come on. Aww. That's a painful loss because of confusion. I think that that fight would have gone my way if I was able to recover health. To do this, I can teach Meowth Rest in the place of Bubble Beam, and I can also solve my PP problems with the use of PP Up on Thunderbolt. This is so much better now. The final Gengar still has the potential to finish me off because Hypnosis works when Substitute's up. However, it misses. Three times, <laughs> giving Meowth a lucky victory. I feel like this playthrough has got a lot of those. It's like, almost like Meowth is like based on a luck-based cat. Lance leads with Gyarados and Thunderbolt gets a crit. So yeah, that's that. 
Dragonair is next. Slash does a lot, but it survives. Gets a hyper potion. Survives again. Ah, paralyzes Meowth. Ah, with my speed cut, this fight's going to be a lot harder. And uh, you know what's going to make it even harder? This. I. Th Oops. Ha ha ha. Okay. I've saved all my rare candies to this point, and I can use some of them to level up and get a better damage range against the Dragonairs. At level 66, this is how it plays out. Okay, Lance again. This time I've leveled up, level 66 this time. Uh, my goal here is just to be able to one-shot... Did I get another crit on that? Meowth, you critting machine. Oh, I really wanted to one-hit that to avoid the paralysis. Okay, well, still Ice Beam. Oh, oh my, that did so much. Why did I use Slash? Why do you slash? Yeah, okay, this is uh, Scott's thoughts. We're gonna do some math now. I uh, chose slash there and I was like, why did I do that? Why didn't I just use the super effective move? But let's find out right now if Ice Beam would have actually done more damage. So Ice Beam is two times effective, 95 times two. So it's doing 190 damage per hit. But slash is 70 base power and it gets stab. So times 1.5, taking it up to 105 power. And then it gets a critical hit on top of that. And Meowth right now, uh, what level is Meowth right now? Meowth is level 66. So at level 66, it's probably going to have about a 1.85 crit rate. So 105 times 1.85. So Meowth is going to do 194 damage with Slash. So apparently in this case, Meowth is actually set up to do more damage with Slash. So I made the right choice, even though it seems like the wrong choice. All right, let's, uh, let's come back from all of that math and uh, get back to the playthrough. I use two more rare candies and try again. Thunderbolt got a crit in the previous two fights, but at level 68, it knocks the Gyarados out without one. It might have done this at lower levels too, but I'm not sure. Now, will Slash 1 hit the Dragonair? Nope, apparently it won't. I might need to be level 69 to do it. I mimic Ice Beam, tank an Ice Beam, no freeze. Meowth's Ice Beam doesn't knock Dragonair out because yeah, it's doing less damage than Slash like we just calculated. I did not know that in the moment. Lance uses a Hyper Potion. I use Slash. Yes, just randomly using Slash again. Yeah, I was not thinking this through. And this time it gets the roll needed and KOs. One or two more levels would really make this fight a lot simpler. Aerodactyl faints to Ice Beam and the Dragonite follows. It's time for the champion. Meowth has nothing for the Sand Slash though. I use Slash, it does half, and then Fury Swipes misses. Okay, so that's a free KO on the team member that I was the most worried about. Alkazam is slower than Meowth and Slash KOs it. Executor could put me to sleep, but it doesn't and Slash comes through with a two hit. Thunderbolt doesn't KO the Cloister, but even if it lowers my attack with Aurora Beam, it doesn't matter because I have Slash. Two Pokemon left. Ninetales survives Slash, fails Tail Whip, and faints. One Pokemon left. Jolteon quick attacks, Slash takes it into red, and then Meowth outspeeds for the win. It gets a real time of 1 hour, 28 minutes, and 4 seconds. It finishes at level 69, nice, with 12 resets and a game time of 5 hours and 19 minutes. But there are still a lot of questions remaining. The first of which is which cat is superior? The wild stray with psychic powers or my trained slashing machine? The answer in the first fight is uh, Mewtwo. But in the second fight, Meowth survives Psychic and has the time it needs to win with Slash. Now, I'm going to do some testing to optimize the playthrough and see just what Meowth's capable of under ideal circumstances with some planning. Because I had so many lucky fights in this one, I'm going to test every gym battle except for Erika. Uh, she's just easy if I wait for Slash. For Brock, Meowth struggles to get by Geodude at level 12 and 13 because it's taking 6 damage per hit. At level 14, I have enough defense to take only 5 per hit, and my increased health swings things slightly in the favor of Meowth. Onyx is a bit unpredictable. If it uses Bide a lot, then Meowth gets into a really good position quickly. But if it uses Bind, then things don't go particularly well. Since Meowth is capable of winning at this level, I did a full 10 battles to see how it would perform. The results surprised me. Meowth's high crit rate, paired with the chance to flinch, Growl's ability to negate Onyx's Bide, and Brock's imperfect accuracy all combined together to give Meowth 8 wins and 2 losses at level 14. Level 15 is obviously going to be more consistent, but the only danger is really that Onyx can chain Bind, and either of Brock's Pokemon could get a critical hit. So I think that level 14 is actually the best level to attempt this one at. Against Misty, I think that I got unlucky in my playthrough. At level 23, Meowth stomps her 9 to 1 by just spamming Bite. One complicating factor here is that Misty can use X-Defend and Harden. 
If she does, it gives Starmie more turns in the battle. However, I wanted to test Screech as a solution to this because Meowth learns it at level 24. Using it first turn against Starmie to proactively counter defense raises doesn't actually improve my results in any meaningful way. It still just takes 3 turns to knock out. I could use it as a response to Misty raising Starmie's defenses though. However, in the end, just spamming Bite is the best because it can cause a flinch, or it could crit, both of which makes Starmie significantly easier. The risk in this fight is that Starmie can use Bubble Beam, lower Meowth's speed, and then could KO on the next turn. Surge isn't consistent. If Raichu uses Thunderbolt or Mega Kick and gets a crit, Meowth is, uh, it's not gonna last. The thing is, Meowth also gets crits frequently, and I only need three Body Slams to knock Raichu out regularly. So paralysis usually occurs on one of those hits. I won 9 out of 10 fights here, which uh, is actually quite consistent for Surge. When I defeated Koga during my playthrough, I was pretty sure that I got very lucky. Turns out, I was right. I lose the first 3 attempts against him in this test. The issue is that Meowth isn't one hitting his Venonats. Now, it's worth noting at the end of my last playthrough, I actually left 4 rare candies on the table and didn't use them at all. And there is the potential for using up to 6 at this point in the playthrough. If I use all of them, then this fight's significantly easier. I still don't one hit the second Venonat, and that makes me think that one or two more levels would be ideal. I've got a plan that I can put in place to make that work on my second playthrough. We'll have to wait and find out what that is later. The Sylph Rival can be extremely easy, or I could get Sand attacked into Oblivion. The issue is that Sand Slash is going to get an attack in. Well, unless Meowth crits with Bubble Beam. At level 50, which is the level that I would arrive at if I used Rare Candies on Koga, this fight's actually quite easy. Sand Slash still does survive, but Ninetales is a one hit, Cloister's a roll, and both Kadabra and Jolteon get KO'd with Slash. When testing, I won all 10 fights. Moving on to Sabrina next. Previously, her Alakazam survived. Three levels higher, it still can survive, but Meowth also has the chance to take it out with a single Slash. I'll survive its attacks unless it gets a crit, so I don't think that this fight needs any modifications. I beat Blaine at level 50 previously, and it seems like this is the magic level for all of these mid-game trainers. Except, uh, it really isn't for Blaine. I get crushed repeatedly. The issue holding me back from at least occasionally winning here is that Slash can't two-hit the Arcanine. Granted, I can win if Blaine completely drops the ball with a Reflect, but that isn't the consistency that I'm looking for with this test. I level up incrementally to see when Arcanine becomes a two-hit. At level 52 it isn't, and uh, thank you Blaine for being completely useless, letting me win anyways. At level 54, Arcanine is still surviving, but this is getting close. Maybe at 55? And then Blaine refuses to be bad and knocks Meowth out a few times, preventing me from getting the info that I need. Finally, he uses a Reflect and Slash 2 hits. Okay, so that's really good. I tested at level 56 because this is probably a little bit safer, there's probably less of a chance that I roll badly and don't knock out the Arcanine. But this is frustrating. Blaine just continues to win. Meowth is just fishing for Arcanine to use a Reflect or for Body Slam to paralyze one of his first two team members. I did uh, test Bubble Beam. It's water move, right? Seems like it should be really good. The answer is no, it's not. <laughs> Don't use water moves here unless you're a water type. Well, I guess I could make him use Reflect two times in a row. The way to make this reliable is to one hit the Nine Tails. And this starts to occur at level 64. Since I finished the game at level 69 previously, I think that leveling up to 64 for Blaine is just overkill. I'm going to try to luck my way through this fight for a lower real-time result. And that brings us to Giovanni. I have two ideas to test here. The first one is that double team might not be as consistent as I think, and two is that overleveling might be faster and synergize with Blaine better, bringing consistent and fast results. The reason I was worried that Double Team might not work is because it might take too long to set up. If one of Giovanni's later Pokemon lands a hit and knocks Meowth out, then all this setup time is wasted, and that's really not nice. The solution would be to overlevel for Blaine and Giovanni, and then be more consistent, sweeping through his team. However, the thing that really ruins this is that Nidoqueen and Nidoking love to crit with Double Kick. So today, the Double Team strategy is probably the best. Despite having an easy time against Lorelei in my playthrough, Meowth isn't performing great in testing against her. The issue is that Dugong and Cloyster can deal enough damage to soften Meowth up for the Slowbro to finish off. I tried going all out on the offensive with Thunderbolt and foregoing the setup with Amnesia, but then Lapras has two turns to use Blizzard or Hydro Pump, so this just doesn't work. So this got me thinking about the grand strategy for this playthrough. I can now see that Meowth starts to struggle at Blaine, Giovanni, and Lorelei. Lance's Dragoners are going to require at least level 68 to one hit with Slash, so this is going to set my goal for the end of the playthrough. 
I don't want to be a higher level than that because it's just going to waste time, so I have all the information I need to go into a second playthrough. Let's see how it goes. I can save time in the early game by training Meowth until it just outspeeds the optional rival Spearow. And then I fight him immediately. This is fairly risky, but it's the start of the playthrough, and I could just restart if I get a bad fight. However, I won on my first attempt anyways. By doing this, I can prevent the backtracking through Viridian Forest and save a bit of time. Also, by doing the training in this order, Meowth is a higher level for all the trainers in Viridian Forest, so it can make these fights slightly faster. I train in the forest until level 13, and then I finally heal for the first time in Pewter City. I've trained long enough so that the junior trainer Sandshrew levels Meowth up to 14 and prepares me for Barak. He opens with Geodude. My Meowth has one more hit point this time, so I must have gained a little bit more stat experience for my HP. Unfortunately, Geodude does a lot of damage before it falls. Onyx is pretty committed to the Bide strategies today, and in between it uses Screeches. However, Bind does a lot to Meowth, and we both bring each other down to red health. Okay, please, please. Onyx uses Bide, and Meowth wins on its first attempt. In Mount Moon, I fight one optional trainer, and then Meowth puts out a dominating performance against the Nugget Bridge rival. I face just enough trainers between here and the junior trainer in Misty's gym, so that her Goldeen levels Meowth up to 24 to get me access to Screech. Now, Misty caused some resets last time, let's see how she goes this time. Misty opens with Staryu. I choose Bite, it crits, and the Starfish faints. Starmie is next. Bite does one third, Starmie tackles, Bite does another third, and Starmie hardens. This is why I have Screech. I use it and it cancels out both Misty's Harden and her X Defend. I use Bite again, I don't get the KO, however, the only way that I can lose now is a speed drop from Bubble Beam. That's not what happens, and I've won. So I successfully avoided traveling to Vermilion before Misty. I make a few optimizations by teaching Bubble Beam earlier and grabbing an Aether to optimize training later on. Surge isn't consistent, but I have good odds here. Meowth survives Thunderbolt and KOs with Body Slam. So that's a victory on my first try. So, I actually did end up using Payday a little bit as a finisher to give me enough money to afford 4 proteins again for Meowth. After that, I begin my mid-game training. I start this on Cycling Road. I need to level up all the way to level 44 to get access to Slash. I get it in Sylph. However, instead of using my rare candies right away, I really want to prioritize stabilizing the late game and saving them. So, I continue training. I finish the dojo, Erika's gym, Erika herself, the trainers in Koga's gym, and just before facing him, I use only two rare candies to ensure that I get the rolls I need against the first three Venonats. Ah, uh, I guess the third one is still capable of surviving. It gets a massive crit with double edge, taking Meowth down to orange health. Okay, that's probably going to be my first reset of this playthrough. I slash Venomoth, it survives, uses Leech Life, and faints to my second slash. Alright. I'm still doing a perfect run. At this level, the Sylph rival is a breeze, and Sabrina doesn't stand a chance now. After defeating the trainers in Blaine's gym, I give Meowth two rare candies, bringing it up to level 58. Okay, please Blaine, don't ruin this for me. I'd be really happy with a sub-hour 7th gym split. Ninetales uses Tail Whip into Quick Attack for a little bit, Rapidash stomps, taking Meowth to under half, and then Arcanine uses Fire Blast. It hits, and Meowth faints. In the next fight, Meowth crits Ninetales, Rapidash uses Fire Spin, and it hits so many times. Ah, Arcanine time. It uses Flamethrower, Meowth hangs on with 5 hit points. That's that, I got my sub-hour split, but I did have one reset. Now I'm going into the Giovanni fight 2 levels higher than before. Double Team does work, and Meowth gets through it on its first attempt. The final rival is simple, Meowth didn't level up from this fight so I fought an extra trainer in Victory Road just to capitalize on the experience. Then I make a mistake at Lorelei. I was going to use my remaining rare candies here to give Meowth a better shot, but I forgot. Dugong does a quarter with Bubble Beam, Meowth crits Cloister with Thunderbolt, I'm going to use Mimic for Amnesia now, Slowbro uses Amnesia and Withdraw giving me time to set up before it hits with Psychic. The following Psychic takes me to one third so I decide to start attacking. And that was a good call, because it uses Surf, bringing Meowth into the red. I finish it, Jinx falls to Slash, and Thunderbolt takes Lapras out. So despite my mistake, I'm moving on. The Hiker doesn't use Submission, so that's a mistake for him. I forget Rest for Agatha, another mistake for me. Ugh, this Elite Four run is just riddled with mistakes. As a result of my mistakes, things get tense against her final Gengar. I can't set up Substitute again. However, it's giving me so much time by using Confuse Ray, and then it puts Meowth to sleep. Uh, luckily it wears off quickly, but Psychic breaks my substitute. Okay, please Thunderbolt. It gets a crit, and that gives me the win. 
And now this is the culmination of all my experience point planning. I've arrived at Lance two levels higher and I thought that this would give me the ability to consistently one hit the Dragonairs. Surprisingly though, 68 isn't enough. I also make another change here, I skip mimicking Ice Beam and use Thunderbolt for Aerodactyl. The following Dragonite can use Hyper Beam, but it can't knock Meowth out, and because of that I can take the win consistently. I've reached the champion, with only a single reset in under an hour and 10 minutes. Meowth felt very dominant because of luck in the first playthrough, but in the second playthrough it's feeling really consistent. This feeling continues until I get to Cloyster. He uses Clamp and takes me down to red health. I choose to knock it out even though Ninetales could finish me with Quick Attack. The AI doesn't know about priority though, so Meowth heals and Ninetales uses Fire Spin. I finish it off with two slashes and Jolteon comes out. Slash doesn't do quite enough, and then it uses Thunder, and Meowth faints. In the next fight, Leech Seed and Fire Spin combo together and Meowth faints at Nine Tails. The key here appears to be going very fast against the first three Pokemon, and then slowing down against the last three to ensure that I have enough health for the Jolteon. This time, it doesn't use Thunder, and Meowth finishes the game. It got an impressive real time of 1 hour 12 minutes and 18 seconds. It finished at level 71 with 3 resets, and a game time of 4 hours and 37 minutes. It's time to rank this cute kitty. After all, I think that it has kind of won me over after this playthrough. It's uh, really sweet, so I'm really sorry Meowth, I like you now. Now, I want to mention something that I realized when I was looking at the tier list. I did 4 playthroughs with Pidgeot using my modern rules, and uh, yeah, it has a time of 1 hour 13 minutes and 5 seconds. So Meowth is faster than the fully evolved regional bird, and that would give it a spot in the A tier. I think that Pidgeot and Fearow probably need a demotion at some point, or another playthrough. Every Pokemon currently ranked in the B tier I played a while ago with old rules, specifically no rare candies. A great shuffle is coming to this tier list, so don't worry, if your favorites are ranked lower or ranked higher than you think they should be, I'm, uh, I'm gonna take care of it. Now, Pokemon like Raticate, Drowsy, Slowpoke, Clefairy, Dragonair, Ghastly, and Rattata have only had single playthroughs to date, so let's examine how Meowth's first playthrough from this video stack up against their first playthroughs. It's slightly slower than Ghastly, but quicker than Rattata. When game time's considered, Meowth is slower than Ghastly and faster than Dragonair. It finished at a lower level than Ghastly, but at a higher level than Dragonair. Finally, Meowth had more resets than Dragonair, but less than Ghastly, so I think that it deserves a spot between these two. I'm quite confident that Pokemon like Clefairy, Slowpoke, and everything above them will outperform Meowth when I do updated playthroughs. However, I still think Meowth is the winner because it's the best of the three Team Rocket Pokemon, by far. I did do the battle with Professor Oak. I figured that Venusaur would be the strongest team since Meowth has Thunderbolt. Turns out even my lower level Meowth has no issues defeating him. By the way, I think I figured out a good way to include this fight in the videos. It's a great tiebreaker when the results are extremely close between Pokemon and I'm not sure how to rank them. Like, subscribe, ring the Trimeco and comment because I gotta read them all. Thanks so much to my patrons, and if you've made it this far, you're incredible. Now, it's bloopers time. I think this fight is the perfect demonstration of me mouths. Okay, next paragraph. Let's uh let's read it. This is uh this is going well, I think. However, there might be some unforeseen fa challenges coming up. Ah, I fell apart. After all, uh, coughing and effing. Uh, uh, oh no. After all, coughing and echids were really painful, so I'm hoping that that's gonna be the case. Uh, uh. On my way back to Cerulean, I realize that I only have four. Uh. I dig back to Cerulean, and then I go, Cerulean. I dig back to Cerule Cer Cerule Cerulean City. Oh my gosh. Cerulean? On the SSN, I decide to play safe and grab rest, my signature move. Then I pick up Body Slam, which is mouth, mouse, ah, meowths. On the SSN, I grab rest, my signature move. Then I pick up Body Slam, mouth, meow, mouse. No, again, I did it again. Misty uses an X defend, me meow, mouth. I'm gonna say mouth, like at least once. I was saying, <laughs> I kept calling coughing Koga. I don't know why, just like, oh, Koga takes the win, like, no. <laughs> coughing is not Koga. Uh, in my next coughing playthrough, which will probably be like Gen 2 or Red and Blue, I'm, uh, I'm gonna name it Koga, and uh, Meowth is gonna be named Mouth. Mouth, like M-A-W-T-H, Mouth. <laughs> ah. The second Meowth comes out and brings Meowth. The second Meowth, did I say the second Meowth comes out? I think it did. <laughs> it's the second Ghastly. Oh, by the way, if you want to know why Venomoth is a poison, it's not a poison type, don't say that, Scott. <laughs> That's totally wrong. 
The final rival shouldn't be too bad if I make it past Sand Slash without sustaining... Sand Slash sustaining damage with Slash. Ah, yeah, this is the worst. Why do I write things like this for me? There was someone who commented and they were like, hey, like you write these things for yourself to just give yourself a hard time so that you have bloopers. It's like, I really don't. <laughs> they were referring to a uh, Fiery Fairy Fox for uh, Ninetales. That one's actually not that, that hard. Um, but this one, Sand Slash sustaining damage from sa Slash. Oh my gosh, it just turns me into Sean Connery. Sean, oh my gosh, Sean Connery. Sand Slash sustaining damage from Slash. Ah, 